Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me today in the session about the CTI League. I call the session Watching the Watchmen because, first, I really like comics and I really, really admire the Watchmen comics. But second, I think that this is the question of the CTI League. Who watched the Watchmen? Who saved the people that protect in our lives? Who take care of the people that taking care of our lives. This is really, really important. And today we are going to speak about the CTI League, about the effort of us and how we are trying to make a safer cyberspace for the medical sector, and a little bit about cyber intelligence. We will start with an introduction for the CTI League about our mission and how we are trying to achieve this mission. Then we are going to speak about cyber threat intelligence on the matter of the threat actors, the organization focus, and the unknown world of the intelligence, and a little bit about what is the future for the CTI League. So let's start with an introduction. As I said, my name is Oad Zeidenberg. I'm one of the founder and the executive director of the CTI League. Moreover, I'm a CTI researcher, cyber threat intelligence researcher, mainly focused on threat hunting and intelligence. For the past 10 years, I'm doing that and focus on learning how to make intelligence better. The CTI League, founded in the first wave of COVID in March 2020 by me, alongside with Nate Warfield, Mark Rogers, and Chris Miles. We started as an organization that tried to neutralize cyber threats looking to exploit the COVID-19 pandemic. And today we are more focused on the healthcare sector in general. We are a non-profit organization, all volunteer land. It means that for the first time, there is an organization that based and derived by its community, that based on the community and the members of the community, the volunteers have the right to say, hey, I think we should do something differently. Our members are from all around the world. In the past one year and six months of operating, we had more than 1,500 members across industry. CTI researchers from, an intelligence company, from intelligence companies, from the infosec industry, but not only, from any organization that can support our mission from all around the world, around 80 countries, including countries that I, as an Israeli, can't go to, including law enforcement organizations and agencies from all around the world. Let's take a look on our volunteering map. You can see that almost every continent is representing in the league. And more importantly, we can achieve greater results by breaking the silos and the barriers between countries. This is what we believe in. Therefore, we developed the open self model. It's a community model. For the first time, we want to build not a national self that protect hospitals, life saving organization, and medical sector in general. We want to build an organization, a self that derived by its community, by the people that share with us their time, their skills, their capabilities, anything. We believe that if they share it with us and share it with the league, basically, we need to give back. And the give back is the right to speak and to say, hey, I think that we need to do something differently. And we are part of a trend, world trend, and I really, really like it, of Austin for good, like other organizations as the Biohacking Village, as Trace Labs. We are trying to do better things with OSINT. Currently, we are not connected to any hospital in the world, but we can make large impact for them. Today, I'm going to share with you how we are trying to make this impact. In order to understand that, we need to speak about the mission. So the CTI League mission, as I said before, was to neutralize cyber threats looking to exploit the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, our mission is larger. We see an uptick of the attacks against the medical sector, hospitals in particular, during this year. We saw how 
vulnerable they are. And therefore, we want to be there for them, not only during COVID. Of course, in COVID, it's an emergency. It's a world crisis and someone needs to protect them. But a ransomware that attacks hospital, it's not something that we can say, okay, this is fine in regular days, which, is, which are not days of pandemic. We have to be there for them. We spoke with so many citizens from all around the globe, and some of them told us unbelievable equations that they needed to make. One of them, for example, a sister from Israel, told me that the board of the hospital told him that if he wants to build stock department in the hospital, he needs to choose between purchasing beds for ER department or to build in the stock. No CISO, no manager need to make this decision. Their mission is to protect people, to save lives, to give therapy. Our mission is to create safer cyberspace for the medical sector and any life-saving organization. Of course, we focus on the segment of the stakeholders, the organizations that can't really protect themselves. They don't have the budget, they don't have the skills, they don't have the knowledge or the they are not capable to do it. And we believe that this is the greatest mission that we chose to protect the people that watch us, to watch the watchmen. In order to achieve this mission, we developed the three layer of protection method. The first layer is prevention. Prevention is like wearing a mask, trying to reduce the level of threat for any organization. And how we do that? By supplying, for example, reliable information regarding cyber attacks. Not only, we are going to discuss about this mainly today. In the future, we hope to train medical organizations from all around the world how to protect themselves from cyber attacks, how to overcome cyber attacks. And of course, the supporting phase, what do you do if your organization was already targeted or attacked, or there is a data leak from the organization? We want to support cyber capabilities with guidance and technical advisors. We want to mitigate attack and help them to mitigate the attacks. And in special cases, like the coordinated October attack against US hospitals, we will build operations or intervention team to help them to exceed the maximum impact we can make on these organizations. But as I said, we wish to be a cert. So if we want to be a cert, we need to make something more radical. And in order to do that, we develop the third layer of the protection, which is neutralization. It's not only reducing the level of threat with masks or going to the, doc to the doctor for a therapy, it's vaccine. How to cut from the root the threats, how to disrupt the ability to conduct the criminal activities, we escalate information for law enforcement organizations that I've mentioned before from all around the world. Hopefully, they will make their further step, and we know they already did. We had amazing collaboration with them, and in some cases, we found the personnel that executed the attack. With that, we can make the biggest impact for the organization without even talking with them. But today, I want to focus mainly on the prevention aspect. We are going to do that. We're speaking about cyber threat intelligence. So let's start with some intelligence point of view. For me, as an Israeli former soldier in the Israeli army, everything is divided to three. So if I try to summarize the points of view of intelligence, we can take a look on the matter of cyber, of course, we can take a look of three main aspects or points of view. The first one is the threat actor, searching information about the threat actor specifically. The second one is on the matter of the organization, the victim, the sector, it doesn't matter, but we are not trying to find information about a specific threat actor. We are trying to find information that enable us to protect specific organizations or specific sector, or to learn more about an attack that happened in the sector. So we can say, okay, if something happened to this organization, 
it's going to be reflected to other organizations. The term for the few, which is the unknown, it's like Le Colin style. You know that it's there, but no one knows a lot about it. This is really challenging. And in the following minutes, we're going to discuss about each part of this point of view. And we're going to see how the CTI League trying to make the impact to find the information that enable us to share it with the organization and enable the organization to prevent cyber attack. If they would prevent the cyber attack, they would be more protected and then they can give more good therapies from any people that's going to the hospital. The question that we need to ask when we are working on cyber threat intelligence or any other type of intelligence is phishing or hunting. By phishing, we spread nets in a lake, in the ocean, in something that we are familiar with, and we believe that there are fishes there. But we don't focus on specific fish. We can say, okay, the probability of this fish in the same spot is really high. So we are going to spread the net and we are going to try to find anything that we are trying to, but we can focus on a specific threat because it's hard. It's really, really hard. You can, you know, try to find and hunt, like in hunting, the specific threat. Every type of intelligence has the pros and cons. And in the city I live, we are doing the both aspects. We are spreading the nets and also hunt for the information. So let's start with the threat actors, the main aspects of cyber threat intelligence. Who targets the healthcare sector? Is it the APTs, the nation state sponsored attackers? Is it the e crime, the financial attackers that want to make profits from cyber attack? Is it the activist? Sadly, it's everyone from North Korea and Iran, the APTs, to the e crime, as we saw in the coordinate attack on hospitals in the US or as we see almost weekly about hospitals from all around the world that were infected by ransomware. We saw some activists trying to leak data. We saw disinformation operations. So if we ask, is it only the sharks, the largest fish in the ocean? No, it's the whales, of course, but the largest fish in the ocean? No, it's everyone. So another question that we need to ask is, why they target the healthcare sector? Because at first, it wasn't make sense for me at all. I thought every country in the world has its own hospitals. So they know that hospitals are in charge of people's life, of therapy. In days of pandemic, for example, like countries like Iran, know how challenging this time is. So why to attack hospitals? This makes it so tricky. My fear when we developed the CTI League, when we first established the League, that the same thing that happened in WannaCry, in the UK hospitals, for example, the slow motion of the therapies, is going to happen again. And we saw that it happened. Someone died in September not directly because of ransomware, but the delay of in air hospital make it really, really challenging. So we don't have a case now that someone died directly because of cyber attack, but it affects people. If it slows down the therapies, if it disables some therapies like MRIs or, or some other therapies, it can affect people, it can cause death. So what can we do about it? And let's share some insights. Today, I want to focus on two main threat actors, not APTs. I'm going to speak about the ransomware and the initial access broker. These two actors are really, really relevant for the medical sector, for the public health sector, and any other life-saving organization. 
let's start with ransomware. In the darknet report that we've shown in February, the yearly darknet report, we explained why the CTI League prioritized ransomware. We said that we see the uptick, the increasing of the attacks from ransomware against hospitals. Some ransomware group like Maze declared in the beginning of the pandemic that they are not going to attack hospitals. That was false claiming. They did. A lot of groups did. And for example, we learned that a cancer center that was a victim of a ransomware was so impacted by this attack. So the staff and the patients needed to try to make the therapies, the treatment, rebuilding it from memory. This is something that we can't accept as the InfoSec community. We can't accept that some criminals will make this impact on people's lives. It's not a fair game between countries. It's not a fair game between people. It's not about spying or espionaging on something that related to the country. This is against civil people. It's not okay. So here, some insights that we learned from the efforts of the Darknet team. Before that, some words about the Darknet team. The City I League Dark is an amazing collaboration between people from all around the world, professional and experts in the darknet domain that also focus on ransomware, led by really good people that also helped me to build this uh, presentation and I will acknowledge them uh, afterward. And these are some of the insights that we found. You can also find these insights and more in our website, cti-league.com in the darknet report. So we found that the main variants, the main ransomware groups in 2020 that targeted hospitals were Conti, Maze, Networker, Ryuk, and Reevil. They are not alone. A lot of ransomware groups attacked and targeted hospitals during this one year and six months since we invented the league. But these are the main variants. In some cases, it doesn't matter if they are sophisticated, they are really clever, they know how to execute the most brilliant attack in the world, because we saw ransom a group like Darkseid make a huge impact on the US. And here, some data about what we found in the last quarter of 2020, and this is really important. 18 publicly reported ransomware on hospitals were shared in the last quarter of 2020, but 23 victims, their data was leaked online. So there are more attacks that not reported publicly, and it's important. No one wants his personal data or medical data to be shared online. It can affect the people that their data was leaked, but also it destroy the resilience of the hospital to overcome this turmoil. You know, when someone is shared private data from a hospital, people can take a look at this hospital and say, this hospital is not secure enough. This hospital not protect my data. I'm not going to believe this hospital. I'm not going to go to this hospital again. And this can cause undermining of the authorities. And this is a cycle that we can't enter now. The disinformation of COVID, as we learned from our disinformation team in the city I live, is so large that we can't accept someone that harming the resilience of the organization. In Quell 4, we may, they made up over 35% of all attacks against the healthcare system. And since then, guess what? It only increased. It means that more and more threat actors focusing on the healthcare system, they want to attack them, no matter if they are in charge of our life, no matter if they also have some therapies in hospitals, they attack not only hospitals, the healthcare system in general, the public healthcare. 
Of course, as I said, the CTI League focus on the hospitals that can protect themselves. But we want to learn about any attack because then the implication of it can be shared with another hospital and maybe prevent the next attack. And last but not least, RDP as a ransomware attack vector significantly rose compared to 2019. This leads me to the next threat actor, the initial access brokers. So for those of you that never heard about the IAB, the initial access broker, let's define them. Initial access broker is someone that gains access into a victim network and then selling that access to the highest bidder. It can be one actor or it can be more. So if we saw before that RDP as a ransomware vector significantly rose, these people are the people that are in charge of selling RDPs. This is a map from the Darknet report that shared the percent of attacks of the initial access broker shared in 2020. As you can see, the majority attacked North America, but it's a world epidemic. A lot of threat actors now use the data of the initial access broker. It's a ripple effect. They hack, they compromise, for example, RDP as the main vector of the initial access broker, and then they sell it online. Here's an example for that. They sell it online for the highest bidder. The highest bidder can be a ransomware group that doesn't necessarily need to have skill of exploitation. They do it for them. And then they can sell it for the highest bidder. The ransomware can use it. They can list the data. All the cycle, all these ripple effects affect on our life. Someone need to gather information about it and say, first of all, here's the IOCs, simple as that, block the IOCs. We had a conversation back in April 2020 with some sales from Europe, and one of them told me that they don't know how to digest information for MIST. So we created the GitHub of the CTA lead with block list and allow list, simple as that. Anything that we can share the information, deliver it. We developed sticks and MISP, of course, sticks, stacks and MISP to share it. And in the future, I really hope to have complete intelligence cycle for them. So if we know the BIOCs, the behavioral IOCs and the IOCs, and we know the main vectors that the initial access broker operates, we can share the data about these threat actors, these specific threat actors with law enforcement organizations, or with the hospitals, the medical sector, and other life-saving organizations, and protect them, reduce the level of stress, the awareness of any type of attack is the first step of every prevention. If we want the mission of us is to create safer cyberspace for these organizations, we should start with giving them the knowledge first these are the threat actors that we know that want to target you. Block, block it. Make sure that you are covered from tip to toe. If the RDP station is the main vector, focus on that, monitor it. But not only. We can't look only on threat actors because then we can spread the Yara rules, the nets of the threat actors. We can learn about them. But if we are looking only on the threat actors that we're familiar with, we are going to miss a lot of attacks. So we need to make sure that, unlike the, unlike the threat actors, we focus on the organization and make sure they are protected enough, regardless any type of attack. So how can we protect an organization without any access to it? As I said before, we are part of a world trend of awesome for good and we are not connected to any hospital and they share the data with us. We are not a soft, we are a cell. So this is a challenge. If we spoke about the main vector of attack, remote access, why don't we monitor some vulnerabilities or some open RDPs, for example, share it with the stakeholders, with the organizations that need and want our help, and we can help them 
and then reducing the level of threat regardless of a specific threat actor. I'm going to present two types of intelligence that we gather in the city alien shelf. First of all, the prevention aspect is protecting the gates of the organization. If we spoke about remote access and we spoke before about vulnerabilities, the importance of vulnerabilities, we need to find it. So I'll get to the data. I want to emphasize the importance of discovering one days in your system. This is very, very important because there are threat actors, APTs, e-crime, activism, anyone that can exploit it in days, maybe from the moment that someone shared the one day, then for the exploitation, it's going to be minutes, hours, days, but the organization response is going to be so low and we need to alert them. So we prioritize critical vulnerabilities and we prioritize some vectors that we learn that are very, very, very risky and make the organization very vulnerable. We created a monitoring system on that. And I want to start with say special kudos to show them that enabled this system. And alongside with good people, we developed the system that monitor on that. And then we can find a vulnerability, validate it, share the notification to the organization. If we have connection with the organization, if not, we can share it with the law enforcement organization. In some cases in their language, it means that if we send a message for, for example, for the Thai cert that we really, really, really love the connection with them because we really believe this is a prominent connection between the CTLE and a cert really, really, really far away from the critical mass of this league, that, which is in the US. So we can send it in Thai language and then they can just forward it to the organization, to the hospital, to the vaccine company that need this alert and they can make it as fast as they can because we translate it to their language. Let's take a look of, on the data. Before I make this presentation, I checked how many notification we sent only in July. In July, we sent more than 550 notifications. Now, consider that we are operating for one year and five months, almost six, how many vulnerabilities, how many critical vulnerabilities, whether they are CVEs or human vulnerabilities, like OpenRDP, how many we found, how many we sent, and how many organizations can be protected more. The level of threat reduced significantly because organizations patched. And if we can help them, this is our main mission. So you can take a look of CVE 2019, 0708, for example, 338 alerts only in July 2021. 12 law enforcement organizations receive our alerts daily basis anytime that we found it and it passed the validation process to all around the globe. And this is really important to us. We believe that we can work together as one unit, no matter what your country, no matter what your place, no matter what you believe, your political agenda. Working together, collaboration is the key to make impact because one attack that the UK suffered can be returned in any other country in the world. So if we learn the insights from this attack, we can re give recommendation for any other organization in the world. This is what we are trying to do. With the collaboration within the city I live, we promoting and encouraging the collaboration. Of course, we make friends and of course, we make a lot of impact for the people that volunteering, but mainly we can make a huge impact for the organization as CERT. And this is only on the prevention level. So if we spoke about collaboration, let's talk about another organization that help us in the monitoring system Zero BS, and I want to thank, Mar to thank Marcus for these details. Zero BS monitoring system, they call it infrastructure team slash notification, connected to 16 cells worldwide, 21 to SOCs worldwide. 
they prioritize 95 critical vulnerabilities and they send on behalf of the CTI League more than 2,000 notifications since we created the League. 61 million, more than 61 million IPs reported by Zero BS to the League and from the League to anyone. This collaboration and more collaborations like this are very important. If you want to make impact, this is the key. Zero BS and other companies that exist in the League has the data. In most cases, because no one pays for that, and I understand it, uh, MBA in the university, I know the importance of have the business plan. You can share the data freely. And this is what we are trying to do. We are trying to encourage the collaboration and make safe and trusted platform for people to share their data. And then we can use this data together to make the impact of the hospitals. So I want to say again, thank you for Zero BS, both for the data and for the amazing collaboration in one year and six months. Remediation is the key. So if we take all the data, both on the threat actors and the organization, now let's speak about some actual measures that any organization can take. If we speak about intelligence, we need to understand the lack of the information that we have. We don't know everything. And then, therefore, we don't know for a lot of zero days that exist. We don't know for any type of attack, any TTP. Even if we look at the MITRE attack, we can see that every time more and more reports came out and we have new methods to attack. So if we have the sense that no one is 100% protected, and we know that, we know that we need to make some matter. So the first matter is to connect to your CERT and your local authorities, make the low reach barriers. It means that if you got attacked by ransomware and you need someone to call, you don't, try, you don't start to search and do all this process from the beginning. You have already someone to reach and say, hey, Call it by name, I got attacked. No, dear sir, this is the first time I'm calling you. And my name is Wad from Hospital X, and now I need your help. Make these connections. Collaboration and working with people is the key for succeeding. Prepare for the attack. Make strong password to a phase, protecting the RDPs, restrict access geo IP location, for example. We've talked about some of the measures before, and we are trying in the supporting layer to guide and advise any organization that we work with how to protect better. So the organization have to be protected as you can. It's not going to be 100% protected, of course, but make it highest as you can. But know your weakness, know when you can't protect and what do you do about it? For example, if you have some antique work, uh, workflow or you have some machines from, I don't know, from the 90s, if you're using some uh, Windows XP, for example, there are so many critical vulnerabilities about it. There are so many critical vulnerabilities exposed yearly and every time it's like double the number or more. So know what are your weaknesses and know how to take care of it. No one is 100% protect. Even if you're building the tallest wall that cover your city, but if someone will dig in your soil and get into the city like that, or if you know the story about, you know, the, I guess the green, the Greek horse, this is something that you need to consider. So connect to yourself, prepare for the attack of what you know that you can protect, know your weaknesses, take care of the human factor. Your users, your employees need to know better, not only use strong password and use 2FA, explain them the rationale. Remember that they are not people experts in the cyber domain. You need to explain the end point behind any steps, the importance 
and not the policy alone. If you say to them, do not connect your phone to the computer, it's not some policy that you need to take care of it. There is a rationale behind it. Explain how it can affect on the system, on the network, how they can enter malwares into the network by explaining them, by communicating with them, by working together as one unit to protect the organization. You make them the first soldiers that protect the organization. You reduce the human factor. You're never going to believe if you check the numbers how important the human factor and how critical the human factor in any cyber attack. They can protect you from any decoy document, for example, if they know not to download decoy documents that sent to them in email in spear phishing campaign and not to press immediately the enable contact, you made a lot of change. You reduced the level of threat to your organization. And the third, the last part is have a plan. Any cyber attack is a term mode, whether it's small cyber attack, like a defacement attack, or largest, the largest attack that you can ever imagine, like the river, the current river attack or solar wind. Have a plan. Every organization that gets into the cyber attack with a plan can succeed to overcome the turmoil. We learned it, for example, in the October coordinated attack against US hospitals. A lot, a few hospitals were attacked in, at the same time in October 27, 2020. And the organization that had a plan at the best practice and the compliance knew how to overcome it. So if you know that your weakness is in a system specifically, if you connect, if you can disconnect it from the all the network, it's better. But if not, prepare for a cyber attack. Take care into your consideration that you can be attacked from ransomware. Someone will disrupt your ability to help the patients. And what do we do next? So we spoke about the threat actors. We spoke about the organization. And the CTI League holds the third also, the third aspect of cybersecurity, the unknown. The third aspect of intelligence, it's wide, risky, and required to think of, out of the box because you need to search for something that you don't know that it exists. Then you need to ask yourself the intelligence questions. What is the PIR? What I'm trying to understand? What is the question that I'm asking myself and with that question in my mind, I'm going to search and trying to identify the new information. What is the endpoint? For example, if I'm going to search for a data leak of an hospital that I don't know what is the hospital and I don't know which threat actor can leak the data or compromise the organization, what do I do? How do I find this information? I need to think about the PIR and I think need to think about the endpoint. The end point, as we spoke before, is to alert the hospital, to help them save their cyber resilience, to protect the patients that their data was leaked online. And if we can neutralize it, then we neutralize it. So let's take an example, some of the CTL missions. First, identifying compromised remote access platform in the wild. It's both on the dark net, but not only, we are trying to do that without thinking of any organization, without a list of hospitals from all around the world that we are searching the name. We do that on the matter of organizations. If we have the data, we will do it. But here we are trying to search the remote access platform that was leaked or sell online. And if we identify it, then we can move it forward for law enforcement organization they can check, they can protect the hospitals because they have the data. Collaboration is the key. We are not trying to make a profit here. We are trying to make impact. So it doesn't matter if we search the name of the hospital or the law enforcement search of the name of the hospital. We're trying to make an impact. Monitoring, attempting to sell compromised assets. 
mainly in the dark web. For that, we develop scrapers. The scrapers will try to find any selling of compromised assets. This is really important because then we search in the unknown. We can't you know, follow specific users in the dark web or searching for specific queries or terms. We need to search and think out of the box. These two can be done with phishing, with spreading nets, as I said, scrapers, but it's not enough. We want to hunt. So we hunt for the information in numerous operations in the dark web team of the CTI League, which named CTI League Dark. We have professionals that are really, really good and can hunt the information from the threat actors and take, for example, RDP sessions that someone is trying to sell to steal the information back and then we can share it. In these operations, you need experts. You need the talented people in the industry. And for luck, there are a lot of good people that believe in the mission of creating safer cyberspace for the medical sector and other life-saving operations and want to join us in order to fulfill our mission. Hunting for new vulnerabilities. We don't search for zero days. We don't check the uh, vulnerabilities in the systems of a specific hospital. But if we find something that can indicate of a new vulnerability, like the 4th of July operation, that we understood first that there is the F5 uh, vulnerability back in last year, in July last year, we created a team. We work for the entire weekend to search vulnerabilities that related to the F5. So we have the two type of methods, phishing and hunting. We have the three point of views of intelligence. So before we speak about the future, let's summarize. We are the CTI League. We established in 2020 as a community of people that wanted to do some good during the pandemic to make a change for hospitals and to prevent and neutralize cyber threats looking to exploit the current COVID-19 pandemic. In this one year and a half, we learned how vulnerable these organizations are. We chose the segment of organizations that we don't want them to make the equations that I made before, or they can't protect themselves from a lot of reasons. It can be large organization or small, but as long as they in our segment, we want to protect them and we will do everything that we can to protect them. We work with members from all around the globe. In the last one year and six months, we have more than 1,500 members that join us in, in the way to fulfill our mission. We now have a mission of creating safer cyberspace for the medical sector and like seven organization. And we do that by three layers of protection, prevention, supporting, and neutralization. Here in the stock, we spoke about the first layer, the prevention layer. In order to prevent cyber attacks, we need intelligence. We had three types of inter intelligence in general terms. The first one is the threat actor. The second is looking on the organization. And the third one is the unknown. We spoke about ransomware and initial access broker as some insights that we found during this work in the league, mainly by the CTI League Dark team that is, is just an amazing team. And I want to uh, thank every single member that joined this team during this time. We spoke about the initial access broker. We focused on RDP sessions as a main vector and prominent vector but not only any remote access is important. Alongside we've exchanged, we found some uptick in the last months in uh, exploiting exchange vulnerabilities. We spoke about the organizations, how we do that by our monitoring system or the zero BS monitoring system and every other organization that helps us in this mission, in fulfilling the mission. This is what's great about the city I live. We are a set that derived by a community. And within the community, we have the talented people in the universe that want to do some good, that believe in the mission. 
they join us because they wanted to neutralize cyber threats looking to exploit the current COVID-19 pandemic. And now they are here because they want to create safer cyberspace for the medical sector and life-saving organization. And we spoke a little bit about remediation, about some steps, how to overcome the turmoil of cyber attack. And we spoke about searching in the unknown, both in the nets, in the phishing method, or in the hunting method. And now it's time to speak about the city future. I spoke about the collaboration so much in this session, and the people that know me already know that is my first mission. Um, this is the wheel that I'm, sh that I'm carrying with me. So collaboration is hard, but rewards are great. And these are two rewards that CTA League members should be proud of, because this is not about me or my partners, Mark, Chris, and Nate, or the people that volunteer in the Watchtower. You know who you are. These are for all the CTA League. You made it. So the CTA League had two rewards in 2021 is the CTA League won the Difference Maker Award winner for 2020 by Suns Institute. Really, really, really amazing ownership. And the second one is the highlighting of the CTA League in Wire 25 in people who are making things better. The members of the CTI League are the people that are making things better. The members, for example, of the Darknet team, making the way of monitoring and finding information in the dark web differently. And they make it in the best way. The information that they find can prevent cyber attack and reduce the level of threat, can support any organization to remedy attacks and to mitigate attacks. And also, they work so hard with law enforcement organizations, escalate the information. Hopefully, we will disrupt the criminal's abilities to conduct the criminal activity. So this is the time to look at every single member and say, thank you. These prices are yours. And we are hope that we can expand our services, increase the impact that we make for the organizations. And how we do it? This is our way to do it. Open cert, we have the watchtower that develops the independent services that we don't want to rely only on the community because we understand that volunteering is hard a lot of people don't have spare time to volunteer or it's really hard to share scarce resources of organization so in any point that we can make it by the name of the cti league we can make it automate it but we have the global community of professionals, and this is the main aspect of the CTI League. This is what drives the CTI League, the community of professionals. Nonprofit organization, we don't here for the money, we don't here for the profit, we are here for the impact. And we want to focus, of course, on the medical sector of hospitals and other life saving organizations. Last but not least, I want to say if we are speaking about the community model we need to say thank you this is a community talk this is not my talk only i shared it here in the uh, session a lot of the data that gathered by our amazing team from all around the aspect from the people that searching for vulnerabilities the people that support infrastructure the dark web team the disinformation team the people that gather IOCs, the people that work with, with us as collaborators, the law enforcement organizations that join our mission and work together, the biohacking village that let me this platform to speak with you today and share this insight with you. Thank you. Thank you for all the members that helped in this session building. Thank you for Matthias and Marcus and Sean and everyone that I must forget their name. You know who you are, you know how I care about you, how we care about you, and your collaboration is what makes me wake up every morning with the sense that we do something good here. This is for you. Thank you so much. My name is Art Deidenberg, 
as I said, I'm one of the founders of the CTI League, but the CTI League is an organization of the community. For the first time, the Infosec community want to do something differently as a self. For the first time, we united over a mission, specific mission that is so important. If we succeed with our mission, we will make impact. We will save life and we will give a lot of spare money and spare time for the hospitals, the medical sector, the healthcare sector, and other life-saving organizations to save lives. Thank you so much. Here is the website of the CTA League if you want to follow us. If you want to connect with us, uh, please let us know in the website. You can find emails, you can reach out on Twitter or on LinkedIn, and we'll do everything we can to connect with you. Thank you so much.